As the leaves they start to fall And the nights get darker All the lights come on and how The streets they sparkle And the fire burns the same But Homelessness is at an all-time high in the UK with numbers rising massively each year. Since 2010, homelessness figures have doubled. It is now estimated that there's 400,000 people sleeping homeless in the UK. That's near enough the population of Liverpool. And with figures looking to double again in the next five to 10 years, that means one out of every 80 will be homeless. Those numbers are terrifying. So I will be going homeless for seven days and I will be doing it through Christmas. From the 19th of December to the 26th of December, and no one knows I'm going to do it, except my friend Gordon, the cameraman, who will be coming to see me once a day to change the batteries on my camera and to have a daily update on my experience. I will have no phone, no money. Only thing I will have is the clothes on my back, a rucksack, my sleeping bag and a camera. I've had to tell my friends and family that I'm going on a seven day health and fitness retreat where phones are not permitted, so there's no way we could have communication with each other. I'm going to find this really difficult as this will be the first time on Christmas Day I will not be with my kids. We are doing a documentary to give an insight on what a homeless person actually has to go through on a daily basis. And especially at Christmas, a time of love, happiness and joy with your loved ones. But the only thing a homeless person will be waking up to is a cold pavement and the air on their lungs. We are hoping to raise as much awareness as possible as no one wants to be homeless. But the way things are going, it can happen to any one of us. It is clear for everyone to see that the system we have isn't working and needs to change and change now. I'm ready to what nervous, the nerves are starting to hit home. So it is uh, getting into the unknown. No knowing how, where I'm going to eat or sleep. Excited a wee bit as well, but nerves are starting to hit home. I'm starting to shake myself a bit. Which think will be the hardest part? Um, To be honest, there's that many. Probably the food. <laughs> Need my food. Um, obviously, miss my family. There's that many. Been away for Christmas. But I just know it's uh, needs must. I need um, that people need to face reality and see what's actually going on. That's what I keep telling myself. Do you feel prepared? No. I tried to prepare myself last night, but I was overthinking it, where I get my worst sleep last night, couldn't sleep. Um, I'm trying to prepare myself mentally, but because you're going into the unknown, you can only prepare so much. You just need to go in raw and pray for the best. <sighs> but nervous, man. Nervous as fuck. So this is my GoPro, this is the only electronic device I'll have. Um, this will be what I'll be updating all my activities with, my daily experience. And Gordon will be coming every day to change the batteries and take the memory card out at a pre-arranged time every day. So every time he comes, he'll tell me what time he's wanting to meet me the next day. And that's the way we're going to do it basically. So this is it. So this is all the items that'll be coming with me. Jacket, um, rucksack to hold. Uh, camera in, gloves, sleeping bag, t-shirt, pair of socks, hat, tracky bottoms, and tracky top, and a pair of trainers. That's it. That's all I've got. No money, no phone, um, just the clothes. That's it. So what's really making you want to do this? Because of the the massive rise in homelessness. Um, but we really triggered it when I was down in London uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I got talking to a homeless man. He lost his wife. And he'd been on the street for six years. Lost his way. Lost everything. Lost his wife and then he lost his job. Started drinking. Just lost everything. This was a man who served in the army for 18 years, fighting for his country. And uh, 
it just hit home that people actually need to see what homeless people actually go through and, and it could happen to anybody so it's just to show people actually what's going on and because it's tough, it, I'd, I'd imagine it'd be tough being homeless. He says he gets abused nearly every day. Um, people treat him like shit. And this is a man who basically fought for your country. So people just need to see him. I'm hoping this awakens people to get the help that we need to, to make the changes. This is that, all set, wallet. Phone. <laughs> it's us. So this is us making our way out, heading out of the town to get my first spot, make some <coughs> money, try and get some food. Um, I'm not that hungry right now anyway, so but no doubt later I'll be starving. So this is us. Game time. This is us just landed in the city centre. Um, just got about to find a spot where I can try and get some money and try and feed myself basically. We're just going in raw basically and taking it from there. That's the scary part. I went down, there was 14 people begging for money. Um, I got speaking to a couple of them. There's uh, soup kitchens tonight in Glasgow, and there's also shelters for people to go. So I'll find out more information later, and hopefully, I can get some food and somewhere to sleep. So that's me just walking along the homeless shelter. The last couple of hours I've just sat in McDonald's, trying to get some heat. It's starting to get really cold. It's been a lot more difficult than I expected. Legs are starting to get sore. Um, doing nothing's pretty tiring. Starting to feel really tired. So hopefully, get a bed to get some rest. As I'm walking through the town, is looking in restaurants and envies a lot of people just sitting there having fun and having a meal. So I've just left the homeless shelter. Uh, I had a bed in it, but the place was filling up. And as soon as the place is full, anyone who comes for a bed gets turned away. So I decided to leave and free up my bed as I'm only doing this for seven days and the last thing I wanted was to take a bed away from someone who most needs it. So this is where I'll be tonight, it's just outside the chapel. Um, it's freezing. So time to get to bed, get some shut eye, because I'm shattered now. Welcome to the Four Seasons. Can't sleep. Every little bit of noise, I'm waking up. Cars, buses, taxis, bin men. Um, struggling to, to sleep. It's cold as well. Every time I shut my eyes, I feel as if someone's standing over me. If this is the first night, fuck knows how I'm going to get through the seven. How has the reality of sleeping in the streets matched up with what you expected? A lot worse. A lot more difficult. It's been a total eye-opener. Uh, normally I'm, I'm mentally strong, but this is starting to take its toll. It's only been day one. Last night I must have spoke to myself a good 10 or 20 times about giving up, quitting. 
But on the other hand, to raise awareness and show what people are going through, it needs to be tough. And I expected it to be tough, but not as, as tough as it has been. How did you find the homeless people you encountered when you were out on the streets last night? They've been amazing. When I was sitting down trying to get some money, begging on the streets, two homeless people actually stopped and asked if I had shelter and where I was going and how long I'd been homeless. They were more concerned than the average person. So they've been nothing but amazing and it's that's a, that's a difficult thing to see how nice and genuine these people are and yet they ain't got nothing. How did members of the public treat you? Did they give you food, money, things like that? The majority of people uh, just walked past because I counted over 600 people walked past before I received my first 50 pence. So, but a lot of people are in their own wee world. A lot of other people are struggling themselves, so I get that. Um, but I spoke to a beautiful uh, girl, Lisa, took the time to speak to me, asked us if I want anything from my shop, and she just looked concerned and it, it was heartwarming. And I, I appreciated that because that kind of helped me through the day, just that two minute chat. So for people who may be scared or intimidated to approach someone homeless, even just two minutes of your time can change their whole day and it makes a difference. Everything I made yesterday was about 3.50. Um, I tried to ration that out as much as possible. I sat there for a good five hours. And today, I've been on the street for three hours and made one pound uh, 32. That's what I've got for today. Please, son, won't last too long this time. Switching on the big machine next week. And until then, I keep you on a shoestring. You got anything you don't want to keep. So, my second day. I've just finished sitting in the town for three, four hours. But today was better than yesterday. I made over seven pounds. The town was a bit busier. So I'm just about to go and get some food. Also received a survival kit from people helping out with the homeless. Uh, toiletries in it. Hat, gloves, blanket, some deodorants, biscuits, and toothbrush and toothpaste. So I'm just about to get into the library for a much needed wash. So I'm going to get in fresh up a bit, get something to eat, and then get ready to take on the night. So I'm just in the library just now. Been here for the last couple of hours, recharging the batteries, getting some rest before I go back out and Try and get some money for dinner. I'll tell you, son, don't follow me down. It's the best thing I can do. Use me as a model or a plastic cast. Or anything but. So, as I've been sitting here begging for money, one guy walked past and says, Get a job. <laughs> really? What an arsehole you are. Just got myself a bag of chips, a couple of rolls, and some bedtime snacks. Pack of Space Raiders, Fredo, and Can I Brew. I've just met up with Bob who works for the Humanist, Humanist Society, Society in Glasgow. Um, so it was just basically Bob just to see what he's actually doing tonight. Okay, we're uh, eight of us are out uh, scouring the streets looking for rough sleepers. Uh -huh. This is something we've been doing for about four or five months. Prior to that, and still, we're running a weekly soup kitchen down in Cadogan Street, we have about 50, 70 people. Uh -huh. And we just became aware of a few months ago, James, that uh, people were not coming to us for all sorts of reasons. Maybe they were begging, didn't want to get up the pitch, uh -huh. or they physically weren't able to get uh -huh. to them. And the physical condition of people who are rough sleeping is poor. Uh -huh. uh, and we started this on a trial basis, and within about three, four weeks, realised it was something that we just could not do. Uh -huh. um, 
and that's what we've been doing. Excellent, you're doing amazing. How long have you been doing the soup kitchen? Seven, six, seven years. Do you uh, find the numbers are getting bigger? Not really, no, they're probably static, but they're dynamic. Uh-huh. This is one of the one of the aspects of it. Uh-huh. Maybe a worrying aspect that uh-huh. yes, we see some faces that we saw six years ago, uh-huh. some of the old regulars, but every week we see new folk. So that's me set up for the night. It's weird because since I've had no phone, I'm constantly thinking just how grateful I am of my life. Because I used to think I was positive and grateful and showed gratitude. But looking back, I was just complaining about stupid things, the little things that don't mean anything. This has been a total awakening for me. No one can save us now The gates are open and the truth So James, how did you get on last night? Last night, I was a wee bit more relaxed. Um, still finding myself embarrassed when I'm speaking to homeless people and getting their information and just having a, a normal chat with them. I'm kind of embarrassed to try and video them. Or I'm even embarrassed to get, take money from people. I don't know why, but I need to eat. But I'm finding it, I'm finding it difficult. But last night wasn't as bad. Um, slept a bit better, still a lot of tossing and turning, but um, the more I'm doing it, the more I'm adapting, but I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. How do you think homeless people are going to react when you tell them what it is that you're actually doing? I don't know, some probably think I'm crazy, but I'm still scared to take the camera out and ask them questions. I just think they're going through enough than having a camera put in their face. But to raise awareness, I feel that it needs to be done why, why they're in these situations. And then I spoke to a man called Stuart, 27 I think, Battles with drug addiction. He's been on and off the street for the last 10 years. Clearly got some sort of problems, but he was saying that drug dealers approach him at least 20 times a day. What's your plans for today then? Just going to go and find a spot, sit down, and get some money for food. Not eating today, no money left, so uh, try and get some money and get some, some, some more food. And then tonight I've got the soup kitchen. So I've got along there and speak to the humanists and just have a have a chat with everyone. How have you been dealing with the boredom? What have you been doing to pass the time? Tough. Because it's diffi- difficult without like, no phone. I've got a lot of time to think. I was in the bookies today as well before yours came. Uh, that opens at eight for a heat and uh, a cup of tea. But I'm, in the past, I've been a, a compulsive gambler. So that's the first time I've been in the bookies in a very long time. So it was a bit strange, so I had to leave. It's, diff- it's think- difficult to find places to break up the time. Go to the library, McDonald's, um, but I'm struggling with it. All this time we've been searching, searching for someone, someone to make us stronger, scared of being alone. Ho, ho, ho. So this is where I've been sitting most days. So today I've sat for about three hours. Yeah. I'm just in boots to get a test of the free aftershave. I don't know if this will make it better or worse. Bad when you get a shower, man. Stink. There's only so many times I can turn my boxes inside out. Temperatures wrapped up the last 
a really good cut for each other, so no, uh -huh. the nights are less cover anywhere, but I mean, no game. Uh -huh. How long have you been on the streets for? Uh, I've been on the streets for November. November? Where have you been staying? Uh, if I've not been making up money to get into like, uh, the Tartan Lodge and sitting up hotel and uh, uh, Kelvin Grove, Fair Foster and places like that, then it's hard to be like, down at the lane at Prince's Square, street. it's hard to be at uh, How are these places busy? Well, uh, it's because they're dorms, not I mean, like, they vary, the prices change for like, the cheapest, like, go for like nine. Up to about nineteen pounds for a share of room here, but it won't be the most. How long have you been on the street today? What time for you know? I was then it's been on about two days now. Fuck's sake, man. I spent the majority of today just speak to homeless people and understand some of them um, don't want to be videoed but I get that because the last thing you want is a camera in your face just basically talking about your pain but it's just sad to see and hear some of the things the abuse they get people peeing on them, kicking them, spitting on them just um, what names? So I've just sat in the town. I'm busy a bit for about two or three hours. I don't roughly know the time because I don't have a watch, so I need to keep asking people the time. But I sat in a busy place, expecting to make more money, but uh, 90 pence I made. Because the busier the street, the more people who are begging for money. So, obviously made less. Wake to the darkness, the world it sleeps on. So I'm just back from the soup kitchen. Wow, what amazing people. Family, kids, all helping out, giving out dinner and presents to the homeless. So I go up. Can I brew a dinner, presents, selection boxes, amazing people. We need more people like this in the world. So I'm just with Mel who's running the soup kitchen called... H40H. Yes. Help for the homeless. So how long have you been doing this Mel? Three years. Why are you doing it? Because there's a need. Yes. <laughs> um, it's required and we all love doing it. And it's good fun. Who funds us? It's we fundraise basically. Well, uh -huh. this has been mostly funded by lots of people giving donations to our local giving page uh -huh. and people coming up randomly and handing me cash, which is very uh -huh. nice. And <laughs> that's paid for it. And Tesco's have been massively helpful and they have paid for a lot of the food, brought uh -huh. loads of presents, brought a treat. Uh -huh. So Tesco have really, really got behind uh -huh. us as well and really helping. And Nando's help us out every week as that's well. That's amazing. So that's amazing. So you are here every week? Every week. Every Thursday. For the last three years? Three years, yeah. Three years in January. We started off with some sandwiches and a flask of soup. Uh -huh. For people <laughs> who are want to donate or fund, how do they get? How do they do that? We have a local giving page, uh -huh. or they can come down and speak to us um, uh -huh. if they want to do. We, that can take a direct debit. Yeah, yeah. You can give gift aid on that as well because we're not a registered charity. We're yeah. a non-profit organisation. Yeah. What's the? So how do they do that? If they register, how? What page do they go on? Uh, local giving. It's yeah. under localgiving.com, mm -hmm. and yeah. then it's h40h. You uh -huh. type in and come up with our page. Uh -huh. The link is on our Facebook and our mm -hmm. Twitter as well. Amazing, because I've counted over 200 people here tonight. Yep. That's amazing. Easy. 200 happy people. So. Yeah. God bless you and we'll have a we'll great Christmas. Yeah, have a great Christmas, man. <laughs> so too. amazing, thank you. So that's my bed set up for tonight. Bending and swaying to the wind in your strife. Can't fucking sleep. So, I thought this would have made it easier as the nights went on, but just about the same. Every noise, overthinking. Homeless people are so brave to to do this kind of thing every night because it's 
mental torture. Uh, I don't. I feel as if I'm constantly fucking complaining, but my back's sore, ass is sore, legs are sore, my jaw's sore. I'm just. Uh, I don't even know what time it is. Good morning, world. Uh, last night was a another restless night. I got woken up uh, by two police officers, and no word of a lie, I thought it was two fucking aliens. All I seen was two big green jackets and a bright light shining in my face, and it was pretty misty last night. <laughs> Shut myself. But to be fair, uh, they were really nice. Seeing if I was okay, telling me about places I could go to find a sleep, and just tell me to be careful in the town because there's a lot of drunks. Uh, and I know this is disgusting, but last night I had to uh, do the toilet down a lane. But I did it in a bag. Don't realise how difficult it is to balance and hold a bag at the same time while keeping a, a lookout for people. <laughs> oh. So just where I've been sleeping, I've just found a, a needle. Yeah, a needle, so obviously people have been hitting up here. That's the boy who, when I was at the shelter, the first night in the shelter, tried, offered me money. <clears throat> James is a cocaine addict and a alcoholic. Such a nice person though. Fucking heartbreaking to see. I'm just watching pigeons eating bread. It's amazing. No matter what you are, human, pigeons, when everybody's eating, there's always peace and quiet. Yeah, crazy for what? That's what you do when you're bored shitless. Talk to yourself and speak to pigeons. <laughs> How are you feeling today? It's hard to explain. I'm feeling... It feels weird. I feel... Disconnected. I don't... Even though I'm in the real world, I feel as if... Because I'm no communication with anybody, it's... I don't know if it's the lack of sleep, the lack of food, or the fact that... I've not really spoke to anybody, I'm not on a routine, it's like when you're homeless, you're just living day by day. I, I don't, it's such a weird feeling, but I feel very disorientated, a wee bit confused. It's hard to explain. Since you've been out on the streets, what is the thing you've needed most to survive? Food. Because if you don't eat, you'll die. It's as simple as that. And it's sad because the amount of people that are going hungry now is shocking. The, Food banks alone in the UK have over one million people using them now, getting the three-day emergency supply. And it's not just homeless people, it's people who actually have one or two jobs, are just struggling to pay bills, and they can't afford to buy food. I've got to take my hat off to France because they were the first country to bring out a law where supermarkets can no longer waste or throw away food. So now they force supermarkets to give their food to charities and food banks. Well, that feeds millions of people extra each year in France. Millions of people. Why is that not a law in the UK? So far, how have you been coping without your family and your friends? Try to, try to block it out. I'm not trying to think about that as much because I think it will uh, distract me, but obviously I miss them so much. And when you're on the streets, it's, it's really lonely sitting there and you feel as if nobody cares and I feel as if nobody's missing me. 
I don't know it sounds selfish, but that's just the way I feel, and I, I'm kind of not trying to think about it as much because I know it's come right to Christmas, but I'm, my emotions and everything's just all over the place now. It's I'm not thinking straight. It's such a, a weird feeling, but I'm just hoping they're missing me as much as I'm missing them. Have you felt scared or intimidated since you've been out on the streets? Yeah, of course. Um, I don't want to sound too dramatic, but some when you when you go to sleep, you don't, you don't know if you're going to wake up the next day. It's it's difficult to, to get asleep. I keep thinking people are, are standing over me. Every I've said it before, but every noise I'm I'm waking up. And there's there's a lot of madmen out there. So even though you're you're there homeless, people don't know that. So you're scared that you're going to get attacked or you might get your things took off you. So it's it's terrifying. To be honest with you, I'm trying to put on the brave face as if I'm not, but. Yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared that scared that not basically see my family again, and I, I don't want to over dramatise it. But that's the way I'm feeling. I feel as if that you can you can get seriously hurt doing this. What's the plan for today? Uh, same as every day to survive. So it's the Friday before Christmas. This is the busy this town has been. So. Everybody rushing about, trying to get the last of their shopping in. Into the night, it looks like it's wanting to play. Into the ship. So Stephen, how's just to find out how long you've been on the streets? Oh, I've been on the streets the last about six months now. How are you finding it? Very hard. Yeah. In the beginning it was always not too bad because you know you used to have some immense more experience. Uh -huh. Then that's when you start taking drugs and uh -huh. so pass the time, you know. How do you find it at Christmas? Well very hard because I saw my first man at Christmas and my I love to meet my kids, I love to meet my missus, my friends, you know, uh -huh. that my stepmate is the kids you respect. Uh -huh. I don't want to go on with them. I know, so this is your first Christmas without the kids and family? It's only a pause one, though, uh -huh. because I've done a lot of prison too. How old are you? I've been to prison. You know. How long have you been in prison? Many years. <laughs> what about, um, where's, what's the plans then, for next plans for you? Our next plans is to get my staff to drink, because I've changed drums to drink. drink. So I'm going to get a detox and start a fish for you. What kind of drugs are we taking? Heroin. Heroin. You know, the barium, steam barium especially. Steam barium, you can cook you with a hoodie shit. Do you find that you get offered a lot of drugs being homeless? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, every day. How many times a day? How many times a day? I've had 50, 20 times a day. Do you want some of this, some of that? Some, uh -huh. some barium, which want to be getting tick, you know, and other. Uh -huh. So it's the right temptation to eat. So I've just left the city mission. This place has been running over 100 years helping homeless people. Yes, just had something to eat. Got a Christmas present. It's just people from all walks of life, everyone with different stories. Again, speaking with people who have two jobs, just can't afford to pay for food. That amazes me that worldwide we, we waste one third of food for human consumption. One third, but yet we have nearly one billion people starving. It's crazy. Right. Just to ask you how long you've been homeless. Uh, this time I've been homeless a couple of weeks. Uh, and six, seven months. Uh -huh. uh, goodness. Seven and months. Before that, it was two years. It was so much. Uh, how do you, if you get family or friends? I've got family. I don't speak to them because my brother's yeah. what you call what, a beast. Yeah. Uh -huh. We've all got friends. And they speak to him. Uh -huh. So I don't speak to him, but yeah. all our friends yeah. is each all other. Friends. Uh -huh. but, uh, yeah. We'll get it. Uh -huh. How do you think being on the, on the streets at Christmas? Shit. Yeah. Sorry for the language. That's but fine. It's, it's supposed to be a time of goodwill and good cheer and people coming together. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you one thing? Um, I'm all 
What what's your day look right? Yeah. See one out of ten people are good. Yeah. It is good this right there. What's the next step for you? What's the plans? The next step would you think would be? Well, I'm the, I'm the plan here. Yeah. The plan that the Chief Chief help me. Chief Chief Chief. LGBT. Uh -huh. I'm trans. So they've got a, a legal obligation to help me, but they've not got a legal obligation to help me. Have you been here? Have you been getting help? Some crying. Mm -hmm. Some. It's not enough. Uh -huh. Have you been? Do you get uh -huh. abused or anything on the streets? Oh, I have been attacked. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but you see the scars here? Uh huh. And in here, and a bit off my nose. Mm -hmm. I was attacked last year, July last yeah. year. For no reason. The whole street yeah. for being trans. Oh, there. What happened to you? Yeah, I got bottled. The bottle got smashed in my face. Yeah. Got, yeah. Got, ribs yeah. broken, etc. For what? For being both trans and homeless. So I've just left uh, Stu and Cass, who I was just speaking to there. Uh, Cass, very intelligent man. His friend Stu, if I'm honest, is away with the fairies just now. But Cass doesn't want to leave him because the two of them are best friends. See the conditions that actually homeless people sleep in. It makes you think because I know a lot of people who love to moan and complain about life. Do we really? Is your life that bad? Because if it's that fucking bad, then trust me, come on the streets for a couple of days and you'll know how tough life is. Day five, just at McDonald's for a heat. It's half six. Shattered today. How are you feeling today? Sore, tired, hungry, but I'm not going to complain today. I'm really starting to feel homeless. The first thing I thought about when I woke up was where I'm going to sit and make money and what time the soup kitchen's open and I'm really, I feel homeless now. You just said that you're starting to feel homeless. Does that mean that you're adapting to life on the street? It's a, a weird experience. It's coming from a roof over your head, food in your belly, clothes, having money to having nothing. It's an exchange that I hope no one has to experience. It's, it's tough, but so for the people who are watching just now, just, just imagine if you had lost a loved one or you lose your job and you can't afford to pay the bills and you end up in the street because the majority of homeless people have been exactly sitting where you are and just bad circumstances have found them on the street. So the next time you walk past a homeless person, just spare that thought that they've been exactly where you are. It's just an experience that it can happen to anyone. So. It's tough. With the amount of homeless people I've spoke to, the majority of them, when they first became homeless, weren't addicted to drink or drugs. It's because of the fact that they got offered it so much ended up on it, but I can kind of see why they're on drinking drugs, because when you're on the streets, there's fuck all else to do, it's a lonely, lonely place, and when people don't seem to care, or you don't feel part of the, the population, it's a, you're very isolated, even though we're in the real world, it feels, it doesn't really feel if you're in it, if you know what I mean, so I can see why people can slip into bad habits like drinking drugs to numb their pain and to hide for the fact that they're homeless and they haven't got nothing. Maybe it's a blessing Maybe there's a time we've gotten tired Tired of all the shit we've caused 
What's your name? Dean Johnson. And what's your dog's name? Kish. How long have you been homeless for? Seven weeks now. How are you finding it? It's rough in Glasgow now. And it's sometimes you can get alright, but other days it's bad. What about, uh, have you experienced any violence? Quite a few times, yeah. What, what kind of stuff happened? All the people who spat on you, go out to the places, trying to kick you in your sleep, waking you up, trying to attack you in your sleep. For, for no reason? Good. For no reason, yeah. Where are you going to be for Christmas? I'm not sure yet. Not sure yet. Have you got family? Yeah, but one of you really want to put him for Christmas. That's a good for Christmas. What about your dog? Do you get offered shelter? Or? No. Sweet. Nothing. You need to sleep out. You need to sleep outside with the dog because the shelter. Because shelter, obviously, it's not cheap for the dogs. That's how close it is. It's not cheap for the dogs. Can't get out because we've got the dogs. Sit. How old's your dog? A year, six months. Is any way you can get accommodation or help? Or... Best I get for up. Uh, what about um, how many hours a day do you sit out? Five to six hours a day usually. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Um, Five to six hours a day usually. Just I just ate so we had a lunch. We got food. So just back from begging on the street there. A lot busier today, last Saturday before Christmas. Made 14 pounds in about three hours. So just gonna have something to eat, rest for a couple of hours, and then go to a soup kitchen tonight. I'm just going to try and get a couple of hours sleep and then go to the soup kitchen again tonight. Try and speak to a few more people and see what they're going to do over Christmas. I've been lucky with the weather. Usually it's pissing down in Glasgow every night. But only, it's only been raining once or twice. I'm just a boy with no place to go. This wee camera, every time I speak into it, I feel as if I'm on the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> what are you going to do for Christmas? Nothing. Are you born in the streets? Nothing. Where are you sleeping tonight? I'm an um, There's no one trying to help you? Oh yeah, they try and help, but then they say you've got to be in the house. You're not allowed to leave till 10 o'clock in the morning. And you're not, you've got to run for 8 o'clock at night. I'm 13 years old, mm -hmm. not 13. Mm -hmm. oh, well. And you've been on the streets for 18 years? Do you think I need that much? Well, see, they, they, they need to nurse me that much. Mm -hmm. Where are they right now? Do you have any friends on the street? People would like to rob me every time they come in the streets. That's it. Is there a lot of violence for homeless people? Not too much violence. Even inter-violence in between us is violence. Mm -hmm. What kind of violence you had? One recent one. And that was, um, that's just a part that I'm not showing you the body parts. That was the female part, she grabbed me for the air, just actually around the corner there. And who did this? I don't mention names, I'm okay. sorry, I won't say a name at all. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I don't need to know anyway. Because police don't believe people like me. Mm -hmm. I'm a nothing. She's a nothing. My mother's. Now, in today's society in the Western world, um, we're trying to take Christ out of Christmas. But remembering that that's the greatest gift of all. We've gave you some gifts tonight because we appreciate every one of you. So these are of great value to us and these are of great value to God, more importantly. And that God loves each one of you. Yes. He loves you that much that he gave his son. And that if when, if when we get to understand God fully, that he came to earth himself in human form to show us how to live, but ultimately to pay the price so I'm just about to speak to Ricky and Julie, two amazing people who've just fed everybody uh, and gave away presents. They're running a charity organisation called Street Connect, but they've got two very interesting stories, man, and I think people need to listen and, and see. Um, so Ricky, it was just to see a bit about yourself, a bit your past and how well you've done and what you've achieved. And Yeah, well, years ago I'd found myself in addiction mm -hmm. to started through alcohol and then up into yeah, yeah. heroin, Valium and other um, drugs and felt hopeless full of depression, anxiety, I was struggling generally in life and then um, I bumped into someone who had done a programme called Teen Challenge, a rehab programme, so I went down there in 2007, mm -hmm. so nearly, nearly 11 years ago and um, that's where it was a Christian run programme and that's where I started to hear about God, hear about us, learn a lot more about myself. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started to really accept who I was, who God had made me to be. Mm -hmm. Started get, getting some purpose in my life, started seeing things really changing for the better. And then I met my beautiful, beautiful so, wife. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, it was just to find out your story as well, I heard that's interesting. Yes, I was also had a past of drug addiction, a teenage pregnancies, just a life of mayhem and um, I also done a Teen Challenge programme and through mm -hmm. that, that really gave us a heart to reach out and believe that other people could be changed, mm -hmm. so that's why we did this. This is amazing, I just want to say you two are absolutely amazing. How long have you been with each other? Coming up for five years this February. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Only six years and five years married. Yes. And for people want to change, can they get in contact with you? Of course they can. How yeah. do they do that? So they can, we've got a, a website, streetconnect.co.uk. Uh -huh. We also um, have our Facebook page. If you just type in Street Connect mm -hmm. Glasgow, you'll find us. We've, we also, if you've not got any of them, um, not technically minded, we have phone. So we've got a mobile number 07840 mm -hmm. 804 637. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, our offices are at 340 Cathedral Street mm -hmm. in Glasgow City Centre, so we're mm -hmm. open there Tuesday right through Saturday. Another amazing story, another uh, turned his life around, inspirational, motivational. So Charlie, how long were you on drugs for? Yeah, I was on drugs for... Years, 32 years in fact uh, on the methadone. Uh, For 32 years? Night, night, night big man, thank you, God bless. Thank you, God bless you both too. 32 thank years you. I, uh, the methadone, heroin and the Valium. Uh, I was on a methadone script, I could not get off it, I tried so hard to get mm -hmm. off it. Um, everything that comes with that addiction, prisons, hospitals, deaths, mental hospitals, everything, homelessness, everything that came with that. Uh, the last, well, three years ago I was put in contact with Street Connect um, I'd just lost my partner in fact and things were quite grim, things mm. got worse for me, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and I was put in contact with Street Connect, I started coming to their Bridge to Freedom programme and through doing that, I, I learned a bit. Through doing that, sorry, Ricky asked me if I wanted to go to rehab, I went to Teen Challenge down in uh, Nottingham through going there and through their teachings and just all biblical principles and that and through doing that I've learnt that I can live my life without drugs, without methadone. Uh, I'm now in the Leadership Academy School of Ministry down there 
I'm just up here visiting, uh, helping out the street connect, helping out the streets and that, just try to put some hope back into the people out there that it can be done, their lives can be changed around. Also, I'm, when I'm down there, I'm out in the streets of Leeds and that, and it's, mm -hmm. it's just sharing hope that life's, you can change your life. You know what I mean? How long have you been clean? Uh, I've been clean two years. I was doing this documentary to try and help others, but looking at it, it's also helped me. It's helped me evolve and progress because listening to their stories, I would have never met people like this if I didn't do this and I'm gobsmacked. Now they're doing charity work where they're feeding people, giving out presents and they do this every week. They have 12 week programmes to get people off drugs as well. What an amazing experience and I'm so grateful and thankful that I've met these people. Amazing. Yeah, I've got his uh, Oh, that's right, There's uh, toiletries and all that in it. No, use are the diamonds. I'm out tonight, mate. I'm going, to, I'm, going to sleep, I'm going to sleep up here with you. Aye, make sure you're all right. How are you tonight? I'm bad Good. How? That'll cheer you up. There's biscuits and that in that. Don't worry about it, we'll go, we'll, we'll only sort everything out. I just didn't mean to do that. So hard. I really didn't mean to do that. It's so nice. Hey, you guys, guys. No, don't do that, man. Don't do that. There's cast, there's a nice check the box. Cassie, you want to give me a place? Fucking heartbreaking, man. So I'm just going to set up my sleeping bag next to them. And, uh, sleep before them, but uh, try and calm them down. So I shall see you in the morning. I don't want to keep videoing because I don't want to become a pain in the ass. Do you know what I mean? Throw cameras in their face. The people need to actually see how much pain these people are in and they're crying out for help. So we need to fucking help. Somewhere or another. I never slept one wink last night. After the horror stories I was getting told. People should not be getting treated like this. It's so sad. So I'm going to do everything in my power to help these people. And it's okay to try and rehome these people, but if I'm honest, they wouldn't be able to keep it. They need to get into rehabilitation and get into a drug programme. Get them believing in themselves again. But they need to want to change. And when I speak to the people I've been speaking to, they do want to change. They just, need, they just don't know where to start. And I'm glad I met Ricky and Julie last night because it just shows that people can change no matter how long you've been on drugs, no matter what age you are. If you believe in yourself, then you can change. And now that Ricky and Julie are helping people and helping people better their lives, those people are amazing and it gives light and hope to other people who are struggling and don't think there's any way out. There is. Before I was coming to do this documentary, I was coming in blind. I didn't really know what to expect. I just thought it would be a case of begging for money and then sleeping at night and hearing a couple of stories from people. I didn't realise the extent they actually go through. And I, I do it myself. I walk, so many, I walk past so many homeless people. I'll give money and I'll the food and I'll spend a little bit of time chatting, but I walk past a hell of a lot as well. And you forget that they are human beings. They have got feelings and emotions and they go through so much hurt and pain and I kind of forget that. So it's just to ask you how long you've been on the streets. 23 years, roughly. Yeah, in Glasgow. 25 years. And I still haven't had a gyro. 
What's the plans for Christmas? Don't tell me I'll miss each other. <laughs> and all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever encountered any violence or abuse? Been on the streets? I see every day, son. I see it every day. As long as I wake up with red on me, children in the morning, I'm all right. Look at me and I forget you. Time stands still as you walk closer to me. Your whispered words. Back to what? Christmas Eve. Because every shop I go into, security guards are always following me about. But I get that, they're doing their job. A wee bit suspicious, and if you look rough, then they will follow you. And there's some days, if you're begging for money, I'd imagine not being Christmas, January, the quiet time of the month, the homeless people won't, won't make money. So if I wasn't making money and I was hungry, I would begin stealing food. It's survival mode. I've been homeless for the 7th of March, 17th. I've went to the homeless in Toso. He says uh, I've got no connection to Glasgow. Can't take me on. I've been to the Higgs Island Centre. Can't take me on. I've got no connection to Glasgow. How do you feel being homeless for Christmas? Sick. If you get family, the state comes in. If, <laughs> have you been sleeping on the streets? On the street. Christmas Eve, and I'm really starting to miss my kids. So, feeling a wee bit lonely. But I can only imagine how homeless people feel who have kids and can't get to see them. So I'm going home in a couple of days and I'll get to see them. And I'm still feeling very lonely and sad. So I can only imagine how homeless people feel. They came up and asked me to buy them booze and that, tell them no. <laughs> and then they went over to another guy across from me, about six yards. He went and bought them booze, but he bumped them. Mm -hmm. also, they also got the drugs and it he, he bumped them with drugs as well. Mm -hmm. He's at the way and I was saying, what's the matter? Can I help you? And he says, you're all homeless, bumping junkie bees. Mm -hmm. And one came towards me and said, what is it with me? And I stood up and then uh, we all had about four of them all and I said, uh, So four of them's attacked you? Uh, but luckily the, the, the shoot man's in the corner. Is, how's, the, how's the police been? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, there was people who were doing there that seen it came running up and helped me, mm -hmm. they, they, they helped to stand in front of me, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're okay? I'm, I'm alright, I've got a sore nose and a sore, sore thing, but ah, you're, a, you're a strong man. And you're crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm afraid that's so, so they're in that van? Three of them are running away. Fuck's sake, man. Christmas Eve? Uh, exactly. What happened? So basically, this guy we was trying to we were just going around doing um, the normal Christmas, um, um, helping out um, the homeless people, just trying to give them basically food, comfort, socks, and everything. And then we just walked around, and we just seen like a couple of kids walk about to this guy and try to start a fight with this guy on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, this guy didn't have couldn't support himself, couldn't mm -hmm. defend himself. So all he could do was actually just wait and see if anyone else could help. Mm -hmm. We came down time so unfortunately nothing happened so mm -hmm. the kids were walking off but eventually one guy came back and tried to actually fight him mm -hmm. so he just stood in front of him and said oh you can't touch him mm -hmm. you can't do anything and mm -hmm. then they then walked off and i think that's when they then met mm -hmm. over with her so that's basically why because they said you, you protected them from getting beat up um was the police okay the police okay yeah they're fine because mm -hmm. yeah, it says man i just want to say thank you and, and well done um, no God bless, have a good Christmas. Uh, you too, mate. So as I've just walked around the corner, um, Cass and his girlfriend Michelle had just been attacked off four young boys. 
Christmas Eve for no reason. Um, this is the kind of stuff they need to go through every night. Fucking shocking. So I'm just with Daniel from Second Chance Scotland who's running the, the charity for the the homeless tonight. So Daniel, how many how long has he been doing this? Since halfway through August. How did you find that? Uh, good. I find it rewarding. A lot of numbers, homeless wise. Here you can do up to a hundred on the streets. Or about thirty. If you have a good night and you do a you do a run through the home city centre if you do Buchanan, you do our gale, and you do Circle Hall and then you can down here, you can probably get all up to 150 people. How, if anybody wants to get involved or help out, how do they do that? Uh, we've got a Facebook group with 20,000 people called SES, Help the Homeless, and our actual mm -hmm. official Facebook page is Second Chance Scotland. Because mm -hmm. I've been up in the streets every night and I've spoke to the majority of you coming up every night and speaking to his manager doing an amazing job, man. I know you've got a van full of presents here, I've got to dish out for the, the shelters and the homeless. Can I see the van? Cheers, mate. So this is all got to the... Uh, this is from Nisa and Burgundy, they basically done a, 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 a Christmas tree appeal. Mm -hmm. now, this is like probably half of what's left, I went down last night, so I've had to go to Royal Mail, get sacks and sack uh -huh. them all up. I've get, and I've also got a, a full unit for uh -huh. loads of donations. So just behind me is Second Chance Scotland Charity. So another group of amazing people, just fed everyone there, vans full of sandwiches and toys. So just packing up and now Daniel's away to drop toys off to kids. He's like the... The real Santa, so they've got a van load of toys where they're going to throw it off to kids and families who will not have toys for tomorrow, So, but now they will, so another amazing charity, another amazing organisation, fair play. How does it feel to be out here on Christmas Eve, knowing that you're going to spend Christmas without your family? You know what? Me and my family are going to have many Christmases together. I'm going to go home in a couple of days and then I go back to my life. These people are still here. I've been homeless for seven days, but so fuck. Some of these people have been here for 25 years. It's just... It doesn't feel like Christmas Eve, it doesn't feel like Christmas. I, I do think about it when I see people out with their kids. But it, every day feels the same. It's like you're not. It's not real. And the thing I'm concerned about is leaving these people the way they are because that's the toughest. That's the toughest thing for me. I need to get things in place to help these people and try and get them onto drug programs and try and change their life because these people are crying out for help. They clearly want help, but they just don't know where to start. Like I say, it's Christmas Eve, but it doesn't feel like Christmas Eve because I know what's actually going on with these people on a daily basis. So it doesn't matter, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, this thing's still going to happen. I'm sitting here, we up in the sky, with all these thoughts running through my mind. As tears are falling down my face, I find my So Gordon's just left, it's Christmas Eve, it's about 11 o'clock at night. This is dead. No, no one about, just a few people probably finishing up from work. It's, it's weird to explain how lonely I'm feeling right now. I don't want to be selfish, but yeah, it's a lonely position to be in. But I know I'm going back to my family in a couple of days, but it still doesn't take the fact that I'm feeling lonely and plus the amount of homeless people will be feeling the same and they ain't going anywhere in the two days I am so it's it's a weird experience and I just hope that this documentary will be worth it and we can get so much help and try and change people's lives. Merry Christmas everyone. I can't sleep so just came down to look at all the Christmas lights. All the lights come on and how the streets they sparkle and the fire burns the same. Beautiful. But I miss you hard. This is um, probably the loneliest I've ever been in my life. Calling me. Everywhere's so quiet. And I know it'll be no 
if this is the loneliest I've ever been in my life, then I can't even imagine what it feels like for people who's living on the streets. Because I ain't going home in two days. I ain't going anywhere. They'll still go on the streets. I'll raise my glass to you on this Christmas day. I can't believe it's Christmas though. I am missing my kids and waking up, giving them their presents and missing the food. What we do nice for what we do now for a nice warm dinner. Good morning everyone, and Merry Christmas. Last night was a very lonely experience. Something that I wish none of you have to go through. I've just spent the last few hours sleeping in a bus stop. This is not the way Christmas Day should be spent. I had to do the toilet outside again, as everywhere is closed. Uh, I'm very hungry. The soup kitchen doesn't open till 8 o'clock tonight for Christmas dinner. And I've no money left. Clothes are still wet from last night in the rain. Merry Christmas, mate. Aye, Merry Christmas. Um, it was just to find out how long you've been homeless. Eh, I've only been homeless for what? Ten weeks or something. Mm -hmm. How are you finding it? Eh, not too bad. I usually spend times in the, in the night shelters, isn't it? Uh-huh. It's bad. Yep, better on the street, you know what I mean? The only reason, the only reason I stayed, well, I didn't stay here, I slept through there. Last night, because I've been asking with my brother. Christmas, How do you find it being on the streets on Christmas Day? No. Um, did you suffer any kind of violence or abuse yet in the last ten weeks? Hey. Aye, aye, I've been in a few fights, aye. A few fights, a few ODs and I've been hooked in my motor. Yeah, he says you were in the hospital. Aye, I lost my spleen. Were you in the army, you were saying? Aye, when I was a young boy. For how long? About four yeah, years. Mm -hmm. So I'm just at the homeless shelter where they'll be doing Christmas dinner at 12 o'clock. I have to take my hat off to these people. Not only the fact that they're helping vulnerable people and homeless people and the fact that they're working on Christmas Day, helping to feed people and give them warmth and Massive respect has to go to these people. Because if it wasn't for them, then what else are you going to do? Can you imagine waking up on Christmas Day with nothing? Absolutely nothing. Waking up on a cold pavement. But I know the majority of you will be spending time with family and friends and opening gifts and laughing. Probably some families, you know, as you like, probably fighting as well. But I would rather have all that than waking up lonely. Why did the golfer wear two pair of trousers in case he got a hole in one? <laughs> <laughs> so just left the shelter after getting Christmas dinner. Again, I can't thank these people enough. Over 200 people they're feeding for Christmas. So, uh, this shelter's open 365 days a year. And it's people like this that make you realise there's a lot of goodness goes on in the world. 
Some of the footage you got yesterday was really hard to watch. Obviously, a lot of people with, with drug problems. Um, how, how is that mentally affecting yourself? Big time. It's uh, because these people became my friends and it's they've kind of looked after me and telling people that I'm their friend so no one would bother me. And it, and now that I know the extent, because if I came in this documentary blinded, I didn't realise the extent of actually what goes on and the problems these people have, but by speaking to them, they're crying out for help. They need help. And once this documentary's over, I'm going to do everything in my power to get the steps for them to better their life and change their life. You've got to remember, you can't force things upon people, but these people want to change. They just don't know where to start. And I'm their friend now, so I'm going to get things in place. I spoke to Ricky and Julie, who've battled drink, uh, drink and drug addiction and changed their lives, and they're going to help us get 12-week programmes for people who want to change, and I'm grateful that I can help them with that, because watching these people suffer like this is... You wouldn't wish this upon your worst enemy. A few times when I've met you throughout this, you've, you've seemed quite like upbeat and just getting on with it, but um, <clears throat> especially today, it seems like your, your mood's changed a lot. It's Christmas Day, this is my first Christmas away from my family, and I, I don't want to keep talking about me, and because I feel bad now that I'm going home tomorrow, but the people who I've met are still going to be here in the streets. Since it's Christmas, um, I've got a wee present for you. I really want an extra large pizza, mate, but a phone, press play. Hi, Hi James. Um, just to say I really miss you, son. The house is so quiet and tidy without you, so really I'm having a rest as well. I hope you've had a good week and um, we look forward to seeing you on Boxing Day. Well, Dad, I miss you and I hope you have a very good Christmas and you get a lot of presents. See you on Boxing Day, miss you, Dad. Merry Christmas, little brother. Don't know what it is you're doing. Hope you have a good one. See you on Boxing Day, missing your loads. Toodaloo, motherfucker! Well, I hope that you have a Merry Christmas and thanks for um, everything you've done for the the house in my room and I really love you so much and I miss you so much. You've just been a little pissed right now and I wish I could say that I would but I'm not. I really wish you all the success son in the year 2018 and I'm quite sure you'll do well and I'm very very proud of you. You're doing really well. I know it's been hard for you. It's been a hard few years but things will just get better and I do love you. Bye son. It's um, just knowing that your family are safe is the best feeling in the world. It's uh, There's no better feeling than being loved and missed. And that's the best Christmas present I've ever received in my life. It's, uh, it's tough, but the heartbreaking thing is for homeless people, they don't get to feel this. They have no hope. They have no light at the end of the tunnel. And, I couldn't imagine what it's like on Christmas Day for a homeless person to wake up without this. It's the best feeling in the world and I couldn't ask for better family and friends and I'm grateful for this video, so thank you. So I just left Gordon. I feel so much better knowing my family are safe and also that they miss me. It's, um, it's a great feeling. It's the best feeling. I've been one most in 2004. 13 years. Right. If you be, where have you been today? I can't tell you. Is this where you've been? Because I've been back in 2004, I feel like about 85. I've a massive head injury. A head injury? Right. Have you got family or friends? No, I've got a brother. I lost a brother in 96. He's 25. I've got a lot. I love... I love my sister. He's done the work for my ma. He's just been diagnosed with dementia. It's the only person in the whole family that's done fucking anything for. 
to my knee, huh? Mm -hmm. And my he's up my head, my fucking mountain in there, cause it drums. And I mean he's not getting things like I'm on my fucking top. To be there for mama before I wash her. And you will if you believe it. Why? Is um I just can't be fucked with this fucking shit and you go through every fucking day. It's just one thing or another. All this walking about, speaking to people is I'm fucking losing my marbles. I'm losing my marbles. Don't think about the world, my friend. It's not your place or mine to pretend. We know it. Just rest your heavy head. It's your time. Count your blessings. You don't know what you live behind. I've seen a lot of bad things. I've seen a lot of good things. I'm a man who likes to concentrate on the positives, and that's what I'll do. The amount of good people that actually do help me. I was surprised. But. The next time you pass a homeless person on the street, just remember it's somebody's son or daughter, brother or sister, mother or father, so it can happen to any one of us to be sitting on that ground, begging for money, looking for somewhere to sleep, trying to survive. Good morning everyone, so this is the last day of the documentary, a lot of mixed emotions, not really sure how, how I'm feeling, it's not as if I can get back to my normal life when I know the extent of actually what's happening for homeless people. Very cold last night, snowing, slept under a bridge. Uh, a lot of noise here last night, but I wasn't caring. We just Wanted somewhere to rest. So I'm going to get up, get washed, and then going to see my family. Ah. As the leaves they start to fall, and the nights get darker, all the lights come on and how the streets. How did your last night go? Very slow. Um, went for Christmas dinner again at City Mission. Walked about for a few hours trying to get set up for to get to sleep, but then couldn't sleep. So walked about, asked someone at the time, it was only fucking ten past nine, so yeah, it was tough, but I got there in the end. How do you feel about going home to see your family? Mixed emotions. Um, I don't know whether I should be happy or sad. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to see them, but because I know what's happening to homeless people, it's my head's all over the place. I can't fucking think straight, but still obviously excited to see them because obviously I didn't get to see them Christmas Day, so I've arranged before I did this for everybody to beat my sister, so it'll be good to see them, it'll be good to see, it'll be good to show them what I've done as well. Um, I, think, I think they'll be shocked. I hope they're not angry, I can't see them being angry, but I just, uh, it'll be good to see everyone. This is every day when I got to speak to homeless people, I ask them to 
give me a message for you as the people to see how they're feeling and uh, just basically try to I cry out for help. Um, this is just a message that they wanted me to show the people what they're going through uh, to get help. Gordon's just dropped me off, he's away round to see my family, give them an update of what I've actually been doing. So I'm just going to hang back until he phones me to go round. I'm nervous, I've seen them as well, I felt as if it's been, it's been years. It's crazy. My glass to you on this Christmas day. Merry Christmas everyone. I'm so sorry I couldn't be spending Christmas Day with you, but I'm sure we'll have many more together. I have another apology. For the last seven days I haven't been on a fitness retreat. For the last seven days me and Gordon have been working on a documentary on the grown problem we have on homelessness. While doing this documentary, not only have I realised that how much homeless people actually need our help, but it's also made me realise how lucky I am to have family and friends like you. I couldn't ask for better people to be surrounded with and I love you very much. I just want you to know I received your video and it's the best present I have ever received. I miss you all and I can't wait to see you. Jessica, James, Carter, don't tell anyone, but I wasn't there because I'm actually Santa Claus. So, <laughs> Merry Christmas and see you all soon. Love you very much. How do you think being on the on the streets at Christmas? Shit. Yeah. Sorry for the language. That's fine. It's, I suppose we're a time of goodwill and good cheer yeah, and what? people what? coming together. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I feel? Most of you. I know. Most of you, right? Do yeah. so you want it to ten people? I'm good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's goodness right there. I thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for going out onto the streets of Glasgow at Christmas and really making a difference in bringing the awareness about the homeless people to the people of Scotland and maybe the people of the world. I just thank you for that and, and I just I keep up the good work.